Welcome to Wisdom Talk Radio, a collaborative community of explorers in conscious living. How are you bringing your unique creative genius into the world? What do you wish you knew so that you could bring about change in the world with your own voice? Well, stay tuned for my guest today, Cami Gildner. You don't want to miss this. Hi, I'm Laurie Seymour, host of Wisdom Talk Radio and CEO and founder of the Baca Institute. Head over there to discover your creative advantage by taking the Creative Innovator Quiz. Find out your personal innovator style so you can open your creative flow and make everything in life easier. For visionaries, innovators, company founders, and product designers, optimize your ability to create more in less time while enjoying every minute. Cami Gildner believes women's voices matter. Her entrepreneurial journey was sparked by the breath of a horse over a decade ago. Isn't that just Beautiful, just, I mean, just the feeling of that. This magical epiphany moment led Cami to discover her purpose of leading changemaker women to give voice to their most important messages and to create a ripple effect of worldly impact. Cami's soulful spirit leads her clients to unleash their magical manifestation powers and live out loud, fueled with vitality and courage. She is the founder of Extraordinary Women Radio, a podcast featuring wildly successful women making an impact on the world. Cami is the author of Fire Dancer, Your Spiral Journey to a Life of Passion and Purpose. Welcome, Cami. I am so excited that you're here today. We have, we have a Colorado show. We do have a Colorado show today, and I, it's, it's so good getting to know you. I, I had you on my, my podcast yesterday, so this is fun. <laughs> it is fun, and we get to uh, you know, maybe go in a slightly different direction, but it feels like such a, uh, such a co-creative journey, really. Totally, totally. <laughs> I think we were meant to meet. I, I think so. It does feel that way. So... I want to start off with something because you, you talk about your epiphany moment with a horse mm -hmm. and I'm really interested in what that opened for you. I mean, you were probably going in one direction and then somehow that shifted something. So how did that redirect your life path? Oh, it, it totally changed everything for me. It was, I had come out of the corporate world. I'd been in the corporate world for 20 plus years in an executive role and have been traveling the world and living just a very full life, right? A very busy life. Mm -hmm. And I um, got laid off. And so I was on this, this pathway of trying to figure out where's my next job, right? And mm -hmm. I kept thinking there's, there's another job out here for me. Mm -hmm. And I always say my first gift was I got laid off. Second best gift was it was the year 2008. So it wow. was the year that, you know, all of the markets crashed. And, and luckily for me, there wasn't another VP of marketing job out there, or I would have, I would have gone in that route. Mm -hmm. I would have, I, I, cause I just wasn't even thinking about other, other possibilities. Right. And I was having a, a really down day. I was on a day that I was, you know, like, what the heck am I supposed to be doing with my life? I was on the phone with a coach, with my coach. And she, and she was like, you know, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know what you should do today? Why don't you just go outside and breathe your horse's breath today? Mm. Right. And I was like, hmm, well, I've been a horse person my whole life. I thought, well, that's interesting. And yeah, I'll do that. So I went out and it was a really cold, snowy day here in Colorado. We'd gotten about 18 inches of snow. Um, so I was, you know, walking up to my barn through big, <laughs> deep snow. And I had a paint mare standing at the, at the gate looking at me like, it's you and me. And so I was like, hmm, okay, it must be Sugary. Her name is Sugary, like the Grateful Dead song. Oh. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I went up to her and I put my head down to her her nose and we were just breathing back and forth and 
it was a really frosty day, right? Because of all, it was a cold day. And so you could see, you could see the frost in the air. She actually had frost on her whiskers mm -hmm. and I was just taking that in. And then I turned around and I, I laid my head back up on her back. And it was in that moment that I just got hit with this epiphany that I wasn't supposed to be going back to the corporate world, that I was actually supposed to be doing something different. Wow. And it, and it just like, came to me in like such a, like a download, what I was supposed to be doing, where I was supposed to be going. And it was just like all at once. And I went back in the house and I journaled for hours, mm -hmm. just, you know, letting all of this download mm -hmm. come through to me. And I never looked back. It was, it was that moment that I was like, and within a month I, so I am an equine guided coach. So that's part of my work that I do today. Mm -hmm. as, as, as a coach, as I bring my horses into my work, I host retreats for my clients, for my mm -hmm. VIP clients in the summer. And I um, ended up in Northern California, um, finding the perfect woman to um, learn the equine guided coaching world. And that was the journey. And it was really the horses that took me into, you know, stepping into the world of entrepreneurship into mm -hmm. saying, okay, I want to be a coach that, that brings horses into my work. Mm -hmm. And I, um, also it was my journey into my spirit, spiritual journey because, yes. Yes. um, it was the horses that took me there. I don't, I, I don't know that I would have gone down the spiritual journey without the horses. So it was really a, an important for a whole lot of reasons that the horses took me in that direction. And it was nature and horses and all the magic of what could unfold there. And I really started to experience um, that magic of listening within and being who we are mm -hmm. through the horses. Yes, yes. And, and I'm, I'm, I love that work, not because I've experienced it, because I haven't. And I have some dear friends that, that do that. I've actually even interviewed um, two people that do it up in Canada, um, not for Wisdom Talk Radio, even before Wisdom Talk Radio started. Okay. So that yeah. part of your work, it feels like it's foundational to so much of what you do. It is. I mean, it, you know, and today I work with entrepreneurs and really helping them grow their business. But that work is like, the, I mean, when they have that, their weekend retreat with the horses, it's, mm -hmm. It's pivotable. It's pivotable for them. I can't say that <laughs> word this morning. Um, for them, as they are, you know, really stepping into the power of who they are and the strength of what their voice stands for, and the courage that it takes to grow and expand and to to really be stepping up in bigger ways. The horses are an, an incredible part of that journey. And so I'm. I'm. I was going to say imagining, but I feel like I, I can say I know this about you. Just in this short time that we've known each other, that, that that is also the way that you step up or that you step up in a bigger way. And, and so how do, you, how do you show up now for your own community in these unusual, I'll just say that, <laughs> times? <laughs> well, I think, it's, I think that's such a great question. And I think we all show up for our communities in different ways through mm -hmm. this. I mean, it's what, I mean, just reflecting back on these last three months, I go, mm -hmm. wow, what, who would have ever thought, right? Who would have ever mm -hmm. thought as we were stepping into this year? And, you know, and I think back to, you know, mid-March when we started to, you know, stop going places. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a speaking gig on, I think, the 12th of, of March. And within, you know, the next day or two, I, I became homebound. And, um, wow. yeah, and so showing up, and, and initially I was like, what do my, I kept listening to what my clients needed. I, I run a mastermind group of, of powerful change makers. They are out to do big things in the world, and they are doing big things in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I just started to listen, right? I said, you know, tell me where you guys are. And as I listened, what I kept hearing was all of the ups and downs of emotions that mm. were really, um, well, I mean, just, we were all feeling the feels, right? I mean, I think this was what I, I noticed very early on. And one of my clients actually wrote a blog on feel the feels, mm -hmm. um, you know, feel what you're feeling. And, and it, I, I so agreed with that because it's, you know, we couldn't just, push this, what we were feeling aside. Mm -hmm. So I actually created a platform. Well, I didn't create a platform. I, I leveraged a platform <laughs> um, called Marco Polo, which is an online video texting type mm -hmm. tool. 
-hmm. And so I set up a group with all, all of my mastermind community and they started showing up on that in a big sort of way, just needing support, needing help. This is how I feel today. Oh. And, um, you know, one day one person might be angry and another one might be sad and another one might be like, well, I'm going to do these things. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the balance of where everybody was on any given day was all over the place. And then the next day they'd, they'd be switched where they were. Right. Huh. But they would show up for each other and they would support each other emotionally and, you know, cheering each other on and, lifting each other up when they needed that and you know just being there for for one another and what happened was they took care of each other right as every we were all together we were in this community taking care of each other and being just raw and vulnerable where anybody was and through that they were able to move through their own emotions and feelings of this and then start to think about gosh how do i show up for my own community yes and that was the beauty of it was they they really started to open up to this uh how they were going to make an impact they started listening to their communities mm -hmm. what does my community need and it's, it was the ripple effect of that and um i i was so inspired by them by what the, by the actions that they were taking and the big stretches that they were they were making and through the midst of all of that you know through the midst of the heart of it right right mm -hmm. when it was just mm -hmm. so intense that i i ran a series on my my extraordinary women connect facebook group that was called own your genius mm -hmm. and i was interviewing them in in, in groups of three just asking them the question on, you know, tell how has this impacted you? Have you moved through this? But how are you showing up for your communities? And some of them were launching podcasts. Some of them were landing really big coaching opportunities for for um, global organizations. I mean, mm -hmm. so a lot of things really positive mm -hmm. were happening for them in the mix of all of this. And you know, they found how their message. And I think this is what I really wanted them to to tap into was you've got these gifts of who you are right and it's it's you know don't this isn't a time to go hide in yes. these gifts of who you are it's a time to show up in your bright light and and really step into what your your capabilities are and, and how you're meant to matter so how are you meant to matter in this world get out and do it don't mm -hmm. don't don't hide take care of yourself emotionally and physically and all of those things first but then get out and show up and do the work that you're meant to do on this work because i think that and I think you, you and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. This, this is a time for us as women to stand up. Our, our world needs the wisdom. I mean, it's, it's, this is the medicine of, of, of um, the world needs the medicine of, of women's wisdom. And this is the time to step into it. And to me, it's exciting. It is exciting. And I know that that you're not excluding men and certainly lots of our listeners no. are men. Yeah. I, and yet there's something about calling that forward, calling yeah. women's voices forward and the importance of that. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit to that about the importance Absolutely. of that? Yeah. And, and, and I want to make sure that I'm, you know, I am not excluding men because there is, I mean, we all hold the masculine feminine mm -hmm. balance within us. Right. Yes. And so what I feel is that there's this feminine rising, this, this femi f femi feminine rising energy within all of us, mm -hmm. um, male or female. And um, so letting that, that softer knowing intuitive side of who we are come forth. That's, mm -hmm. that's the piece that I'm talking about. So yeah. it's that it's that opening uh, yes. rather than the pointed focus. It's that more diffused focus that Absolutely. embraces a bigger picture, perhaps. Right, and it's it's the receiving internally. I mean, so this is even mm -hmm. what you think about what happened with the mastermind, my mastermind group. They received first, right? Yes, and then they went out and and they opened up. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's it, it's a different energy versus the the driving. Um, kind of approach that is very pointed mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is an energetic shift that is happening in the world is that, you know, we we're coming through some, a crazy year. I mean, this okay. is mm -hmm. the craziest year we're going to remember it probably in our lifetime. And I hope. <laughs> 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 um, and through this, um, 
you know, there's a different way of being a different way in, of showing up and leading. And I think that's the part that feels really exciting to me is this different way of showing and leading and serving and mm -hmm. um, being in a more open and expansive approach versus, um, you know, a box. Yeah. It's, it's like stepping out of, it's, it's like blossoming out of the box. <laughs> And there is something, I feel the energetic difference of that as you speak mm -hmm. um, and the importance of, of being able to tap into that energetic difference of, of being a leader in this way. Yes. Right. And I think this is it. It says, you know, being called to be a leader and whatever your journey is, you know, your mm -hmm. purpose, the reason you're here on this earth owning your leadership and it can be scary, right? I mean, it yeah. can be so scary to step up and own what it is, you're, how you're meant to show up and, and be expansive. There's the, there, and it's, it's, but stepping into it anyway. Right. And that's courage, right? Courage is not the absence of fear. It's that right. willingness to still step forward. Yes. So yes. you're really talking about a courageous pathway. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so for you personally, what do you see as the potential for change with this new expression? I think our world is changing, right? I think we've been, I think our world has been so driven by the masculine, the push, the, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, even how we look at, you know, how companies are growing. I think what you're starting to see com is, is you're seeing companies that are really starting to bring people more into the forefront, um, people, companies that are starting to look more at the culture and mm -hmm. brings, bring a deeper connection to what drives companies forward, companies that want to have a purpose, right? I mean, you hear the B Corps mm -hmm. right now, you know, that are out there, you're, you're seeing a shift from, it's all about the bottom line mm -hmm. to it's, it's more about the impact that we're, we're, we're making on the earth. It's the impact of the choices that we are making in our business. Yes. Um, and yeah. I think that's the shift. It's, it's a different way of being a different way of, 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 of doing. And, you know, my hope for on the other side of all of this is we, Take, we all take lessons. I know for myself, I know being home for three months, um, I've slowed down, right? Yes. I have not been on the same go, go, go mm -hmm. that, um, and, and granted, I don't have children and, and, and those, the women who have children and within homeschooling, they're, they're, I've got to give them a world. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I have, yes. I have a child, but he's, he's 37 years old. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about his schooling exactly. right now. Same, same thing. So, yeah. Here. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, for me, it's like, even my own being, it's like, how do, what am I learning from this is, is, is that mm -hmm. I don't want to be back in that push. I, you know, I've been doing more podcasting, which, you know, mm -hmm. I have my own podcast, which I've always loved. Um, but I've been and it's on a, yeah, it's a beautiful podcast that you have. Thank you. And the way it's serving the world. And I don't know, how, I'm not even talk, talking about how it's serving you, but how it's serving the world is with such a big voice. Oh, thank you so much. And it's, it's going to be on other people's podcasts. I'm having so much fun. I'm like, who wants to go be on a speaker, a speaker um, route again? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Because I'm loving the podcasting. Yes. So, you know, there's, there's things that I can see shifting in me and um, I can see um, being at just at a, at a, at a, I don't want to be in a push or, and I have, I've always been pretty good about not jumping into the push and the drive in mm -hmm. my business, mm -hmm. but I can flip back there really easily. I mean, I have that, that, that a side of me, <laughs> I, you know, and I go back to my corporate days and I remind myself, I don't want to oh, go yeah. work 80 hour weeks again. Mm -hmm, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. and I, and I've been really good about thinking about what's the right work-life balance for my business. But yeah. even this, these three months have me realizing my tendencies toward that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I remember the days of traveling, you know, to go to a meeting, flying somewhere to go to a meeting, ending the meeting, going into my hotel room and still having to work for the next three hours to yeah. get done everything that I didn't get to do while I was 
flying yeah. in in a meeting. Yeah, and that's Absolutely. not good balance. Yeah, and, but you said something a little bit ago that I wanted to just bring forward um, the, the the changing the changes that you're seeing in the corporate world, the changes that you're seeing in even the entrepreneurial world, right. perhaps that is it's not either or. It's not bottom line or right. people. Right. That there's something there's an inclusivity there that is new. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, when I think about how I work with my clients, it's really about stepping into this light of who you are and this purpose that you have in the world. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, when you're really in alignment, what happens is the universe gets all in behind you. And it's yes. like the, you, you get the <laughs> flow of all the right people, all the right opportunities start flowing. And that's when your business really takes off, but it's a mm -hmm. whole different approach than the drive approach of, oh my gosh, I need to do, 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 do versus stepping into, okay, how am I meant to be showing up for my communities and serving my communities mm -hmm. and, you know, building the right models, building, it's imp really important to build the right business model around this so that, you know, you're building the kind of business that you want. However, mm -hmm. you're doing it in a way that is really open into the the receiving and it's open into the expansion. So it's, yeah. it's, it is a very different energy. And, and what I'm also hearing you say is that there's a way that you are bringing that forward for women where, or I'll just say people, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that it, it's allowing them to step into something that, that doesn't show up when you're push, push, pushing. It's so because true. It doesn't, the magic isn't, you can't feel the magic. You can't, yeah. you don't see it. You miss yeah. the, the signs and, the, and the, the, the little pathways that are going to take you to where you really want to go. You totally miss the, you miss the signpost. And I'll tell you, so when I, I started my business almost 11 years ago now, mm -hmm. and I had a, a nice early, I mean, I was so on fire with, you know, bringing the horses into it. And I was, you know, I was really in alignment, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it grew really quickly in those first several years. I had the right coaches show up for me. I had all the right, mm -hmm. you know, all the right things were showing up for me. And then I started seeing a lot of these shiny star promises, right? Like, <laughs> you know, here's five steps to this or seven mm -hmm. steps to this. Mm -hmm. And I started like following them all mm -hmm. and you start following them all. And one, you start following formulas, right? You start mm -hmm. following the, okay, let's, you know, you need to play on the pain points. You need to um, mm. talk about the scarcity. And, and so I started following all these formulas and what happened was, you know, my business had been growing. Mm -hmm. I start following all of these. It starts to flatten out mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm still not listening to my inner wisdom, right? I changed right. up all my writing that had come, had really flowed for it from inside of me mm -hmm. to being following these formulas. And then there was a year where it actually dropped. And mm -hmm. I was, I knew something was off. I didn't know what it was. And so I decided I really needed to rebrand. So I took the year and really started just listening. What's my business want to be? You yes. know, asking these questions, asking what does it want to be? How am I meant to serve? Um, I started playing with the, the rhythms of the moon cycles, the eclipses, all these different things and mm -hmm. journaling and writing and, you know, just having, creating ritual around, mm -hmm. you know, this is a special, my business is special. It's, there's magic in my business. Yeah. What does it want to be? And I started to listen and I got the downloads, right? I mean, the, uh -huh. the things came to me, what my business wanted to be and how to shape it and how to mm -hmm. rebrand and what's the, you know, what were the core elements of what I stood for? And that magic is what, what really, and it's, it, as soon as I did that, it's like, Ooh, my business just, I mean, just went crazy how it grew. And that's and, the feedback. That's the feedback yeah. from life that says, yes. Oh, when I follow, when I'm aligned and I take action based on what's, what I get, when I, what I'm receiving from my own inner guidance. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's one way, you know. And so that was the, kind of the first learning through that. Right. And then there's uh -huh. of course a, a second. And I think this is the point is, is that there's, there's more and more learnings to, mm -hmm. to, to receive. The more you open up to it, the more you get guided. 
And, you know, so you get the, the elements of your business start falling into place. And then you get like this aha moment, like, oh my gosh, this is the next part that fits in <laughs> mm -hmm. here. And this is why it's so perfect. And, you know, it's, it's when we start expanding into bigger and bigger leadership roles and how mm -hmm. we show up and how we serve, we need to take care of that inner side of us, that, yeah. that how we resonate. And I call it the R factor. Mm -hmm. Tell me um, about that. So the R, factor, the R factor, yes, it's, our, it's, it's how we resonate. It's the energy yeah. that we're in. And there's multiple components to how we resonate. And any one of them can break down. So we can have all the right branding in place and all the right business models in place. But if we're not taking care of our R factor, which mm -hmm. is how we resonate, that energetic mm -hmm. state of how we show up in the world, how we attract people into our, our, our lives and our world, if we don't take care of that, it won't grow, right? So what we have to do is learn to listen to, 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 to kind of touch base on all these different components of our factor. So the first one is our mindset, mm -hmm. right? So it's, are we in a, are we having a self doubt happening in our back of our <laughs> mind on a frequent basis? Are mm -hmm. we, you know, are we playing smaller because um, of these small voices in the back of our head? Are we, is, is fear showing up? So really learning how to, one, notice it, mm -hmm. what's going on in a mindset perspective, and then learn to embrace those emotions and feelings and, and, and move through them. So, you know, mm -hmm. finding the right tools to really address when we get the negative self-talk or the fear mm -hmm. that shows up. Because everybody gets it when you're expanding and you're growing. It's just, it's just Especially, there. yeah, because exactly. you're looking to the unknown. Right. Right. So learning how to shorten those time cycles around, uh, around that. So mindset is the first one. The second part of that is our body. And that's really multi multitudes to that. It can be our energetic body. So how we're showing up energetically. I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of Reiki and energetic work mm -hmm. to help us stay, you know, keep our vessel clear and clean. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, we'll have to talk about Terea touch then sometime. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Yeah. I want to hear more. And then the, um, um, you know, even just like our, you know, how we take care of our body it can be the mm -hmm. nutrition, the physical exercise, you know, so that we have a, a, a finely tuned body that we can really show up in our, in our work in the best way. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're just being healthy at the end of the day. It's like, yeah. how can we, how, how can we make our body the healthiest it can yeah. be? This is the vehicle through which the energy exactly. is going to come through. Exactly. And then the third part of this is, is spirit and that's spirit. However you spirit, right? I mean, everybody's is different. And I, and, and so it's really just owning how, what your purpose is, how you spirit in this world and nurture that. Mm -hmm. um, so taking care of our spiritual being. How and do then, you, how do you suggest that people do that? And I, I, I know you've got a next point, but I want to pull this yeah. out. How do you suggest that people nurture that? Um, one is to listen, right? It is to make that space to listen. If we, you know, whether it's through journaling, um, meditation, prayer, whatever your mm -hmm. w approach to l tuning into spirit is, I mean, okay. heck, getting out into nature is a big one for me. So if I can, yes. you know, get out on a walk, if I can go out to my barn with my horses, mm -hmm. there's a beautiful place that I spirit, right? So mm -hmm. everybody's is unique and different and knowing and exploring it and being curious about what spirit means to you and then nurturing that. Yes. Whatever that looks like. Um, you know, it's like, I, I think spiritual spirituality is such a personal journey. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's been a very personal journey for me. And there was a time where I didn't even want to own, you know, spirit was just not something that I would have ever told you would be a core part of my business. And it's so intricate to my business, right? Mm. You know, so 12, 15 years ago, I would have been, I would be leading entrepreneurs through the work of really leading a spiritual, I mean, cause really, I mean, I think um, being an entrepreneur is a spiritual journey. Oh my goodness. And, yes. It's a self-awareness yeah. journey for sure. <laughs> right. And so I think that, I had to really figure that out and then I had to really trust it and learn to start recognizing that, you know, the universe will get in all behind me if mm -hmm. I just start to listen yeah. and, and to, to make space for that. So for me, that's what that is. But I, what I would encourage anybody listening is to be just really clear about what does spirit mean to you? What's your spirituality mean to you? And mm -hmm. how is, how is it 
an intricate part of your journey yeah. because I'm guessing that there is, you know, it's an important thread through the mix of, of, of where you're going. And if you learn to listen to it and connect into it, it's, you can yeah. be really guided. Yeah. And so the importance of acknowledging that first and foremost, so that you can start to see what that really is for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then the fourth component of our factor is your community. And that's building a community that lifts you up, right? Or being in community that lifts you up. Um, so, you know, just kind of checking in, where are you spending time in community? Mm -hmm. Is it a community that is uplifting or does it pull you down? Because if it pulls you down and it's not the right place, mm -hmm. you need to, you want to feel better when you're in that community. And there's plenty of community that's out there that helps you tap into that. So all of those raise how you resonate, right? I mean, from the, the mindset to this, to the um, body, to the spirit, to the mm -hmm. community, all of this raises up how you show up in our world in your business in your life. And you want to feel the high vibration there, right? Mm -hmm. You want to, mm -hmm. and if it's not high vibration, it's like tuning into, okay, and we're not going to be high vibration all the time. I mean, there's going to be days where we're low vibration. That's the contrast. How yeah. would we know what's high yeah. without knowing the other side? Yeah. And it's totally okay. It's just mm -hmm. noticing where you are. And it's like, okay, how might I feel a little bit better? Yeah. You know, what, what choices, what decisions can I make to feel a little bit better? Mm -hmm. And you can look at all, at all those four components and see which one is really, you know, needing some love today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you take it to that next level. And then, you know, you're just making choice by choice. Wow. That's really important. That's because I know that you focus on that or you teach people about that. Uh, one aspect at least is around helping them grow their business. Yeah. Yeah. How does that do that? How does that impact that? Well, I think it's probably the most important thing we can do to grow our business. Um, like I said, you know, we, we, you got to have the right brand, the way, you know, the way you talk about your business and all the, you know, the right business model and all those pieces. And you can be getting on stages and on podcasts and getting your voice out into the world. If you're not nurturing your R factor, there's nothing more important that you can do for your business is really learning to care for that R factor of you mm. and just take it to, you know, fine tune it on a daily basis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that, that you're emphasizing that daily basis. It, it becomes a practice. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it's, and it's really funny because R factor is pretty new in my business. Right. So this is one of those moments something that you've created in it recently. Right. Yeah. Right. Within the last year. And, mm -hmm. um, the, the funny story was that, um, you know, I've been teaching the brand and the business models and all of that for multiple years in my business. Mm -hmm. And I had been talking about how you resonate matters, <laughs> but I didn't have all the pieces to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so I love how we can, and we were talking yesterday on my podcast about creation, right? The innovation, mm -hmm. the creation. And so I had my big three day event, extraordinary women ignite, um, last November it was my fifth annual, um, extraordinary women ignite. And, um, leading up to that, my husband and I went to Italy for a couple of weeks last fall. So like in end of August, end of September to first part of October. Mm -hmm. We got back October 5th. My event was November, um, I don't remember, 11th or 6th or 7th and 8th or something mm -hmm. like that. It was, you know, it was that first week in November. And so I, we were in Italy and I had all this stuff on my calendar, mm -hmm. right? I had all these things, all these events I needed to go to that very first week that I was back and, you know, which is going to be me jumping on the, the go. And um, November 6th, well, November 5th, my husband got really sick. No November 6th, I got very sick. Wow. And we ended up spending all of November, or o I'm talking October, not November, excuse me. The, the day when after we got back. back. Yeah. yeah. The day after we got back, we both got really sick. And um, basically all of October was shot for me going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, so mm -hmm. I didn't go anywhere the whole month. And I had to cancel all my, my events I was going to go to. I had some mm -hmm. speaking. I mean, it was just, there was all sorts of things I had to cancel. And 
at the same time, I ended up being home, you know, the first week I didn't feel good, but then I started to feel a little bit better, but I had space and time to be thinking and planning for my Ignite event. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden the, I, it is, it's like all the pieces started to fall into place of, oh my gosh, this is, this is real. And I, oh, I was reading, I was reading, um, Gabby Bernstein's, um, book, um, gosh, I'm not going to think of the name of it off the, the, the one that released last fall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, um, and then I ended up doing some pot or some, um, meditations that all had some things that were all connected. So, you know, the universe just starts giving you these clues mm -hmm. and it just all dropped in for me. And it was like, that's where our factor came from. And, I launched it at Ignite last year and people were like, oh my gosh, this is this missing piece for me. This is the wow. piece that I've been really needing. And so this is, this is, I think, a, next, a really important element of what I'm doing with my clients right yeah. now. I'm, I'm hearing it as a kind of a bridge into a new way of operating. Yes. I like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So, so I want to ask you, mm, what's your favorite question to ask women who want to raise up their impact in the world? Yeah, my favorite question is, if the whole world can hear one message from you, what would it be? And mm. the reason I like this question is because I think people... When, when, when you can respond to that, when you can respond to that question, mm -hmm. you are putting a stake in the ground for what you stand for. Right. right. And right. it's, it's an opinion and it, it's, it's an elevated um, message. It's not a, a pretty meme. It is mm -hmm. actually, you know, this is why, this is what I want the world to know from me. And it's, it's powerful because it's, you want it to be something short and memorable and repeatable and where people just start to think of you, right? Yeah. Um, so, so I think that um, I think that if we can really find that message and own it mm -hmm. and step in it, become known for it, you really start to build your thought leadership in the space that you serve. Mm -hmm. Well, I really feel the the power of that. Right. And uh, and. And that takes courage, right? Because it does. it's really, it's really like being that leading edge for something. Right. Right. I often give um, some examples around that, like Malala, and I'm not going to be able to name it verbatim off the top mm -hmm. of my head, but it's like, you know, one pen, one book, um, um, one child can change the world. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, get, give that education. So finding that thing that, that you want to stand for, that's memorable, that's repeatable, that, that gets people thinking in different ways, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's an important element of that is gets people going, Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. What if we did that? How would that change the world? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I guess I want to keep going, but, and <laughs> I know we need to start, you know, <laughs> so I want to ask, uh, how can people contact you? So I run a Facebook group called Extraordinary Women Connect, and mm -hmm. it's, it's my, my little hub of my community that of these powerful change maker women coming together and really you know, supporting one another, uplifting one another. And we do a lot of work on raising up your voice and getting your voice out into the world. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to find that is just go into your, um, your, your web browser and type in um, women raise up. And that mm -hmm. will take you to extraordinary women connect on um, Facebook. So that's it. That's one place. And then the second place is um, on, on my, my website is cammygellner.com. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I, I love my community. Um, I host a lot of virtual events for people to, to join us, um, in community connecting great women to great women. Um, I host my three day event called extraordinary women ignite every November. And, um, so there's, there's all kinds of fun, um, amazing ways that you can be in community and connection with some of my my community of women who are really just out doing amazing things in the world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you are 
right there with them, aren't you? Oh, I mean, you're, you. you're leading the way and you're showing the way and you're elevating them. Mm, that's what, thank that's you. my experience of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So thank you so much, Cami, for being with us today. Um, yeah, there really are things I want to keep going on with you, but another time. Yes, Lori, and it's, it's, I, I'm so excited to know you. I'm so excited to be in community with you and continue, continue to just um, see all the wonderful things you're bringing into the world. I know mm. you're bringing just some really amazing gifts to so many people. So thank you for the beautiful work you're doing. Mm, thank you. And who knows where our paths may cross, uh, certainly when we're allowed in, in Colorado. That's right. That's right. I look forward to that face-to-face -face coffee. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Cami. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today at Wisdom Talk Radio. Join us here regularly for more wisdom, discovery, and illumination. Remember, you can find us at your favorite place to listen to podcasts. And if you've enjoyed listening to us today, please leave us a review because that helps people find us. It helps the wisdom. It helps the, the transformation energy expand. And isn't that what we want to do to transform the world? And then for more about fast tracking your own ideas to creation and to revenue, find me, Laurie Seymour, over at thebacainstitute.com. Take the quiz and find out your creative innovator style so that you can turn your ideas into reality without missing another moment. Thanks for joining us here at Wisdom Talk Radio. We wish you well in your conscious explorations. For more information and to join in the conversation, our website is wisdomtalkradio.com or at Wisdom Talk Radio on Facebook.